This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Today, I've got to make some doors, but not just any doors, glass panel doors. Kind of like this, but not exactly because they have to be pocket doors, but not pocket doors. They'll become pocket doors. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. We've renovated pretty much every room in our house, except for these two rooms. And that mostly has to do with that piano. If you've never had a piano in your house, you may not realize this, but they are incredibly heavy and often very difficult to move. And that is the case with this one, but we use it all the time. Pretty much all of us play piano. It's something we use multiple times a day, every single day, but it's also really loud. So our plan is to make two glass doors that actually slide into behind this wall, but they come together to close off this room from the rest of the house. I've got a model. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In that process, I figured out that the opening is 72 inches and each one of the sides is 36 inches, which means I can make two 36 inch doors on the sides that slide in and completely cover the opening. These doors are gonna mimic the folding glass doors that we have on the other side of the room, but those are built very differently and they're totally different sizes, so they can't be exactly the same here. I'm gonna take the same idea, take the glass panels, but I have to make them completely different and out of different material, and I'll show you why. To try to keep these new doors similar to the old doors, I'm gonna have the same number of glass panels and the dimensions of those panels are gonna be really, really close, but the doors themselves are very different sizes, which means I have to change the dimensions of all the wood around the glass. And these pieces are four inches wide. And that means I can't build this door out of two by fours. A really common method for building this kind of door is to use two by fours for the verticals and for the horizontal pieces. You trim off the rounded edges and make everything sharp and then you can just put the pieces together. But these aren't wide enough. I still need the thickness of a two by four, but the width is not enough. Now you could go to a two by six, but then you have to cut off a bunch of extra stuff. So I think we're gonna make the whole thing out of MDF. So here's the plan, and yes, it's gonna be heavy. I'm gonna take that sheet of three quarter inch MDF and I'm gonna cut it into four inch strips and then glue those together to make up some kind of like one and a half inch by four inch boards and then use those boards to make a door. Let's do it. MDF is so messy. It gets everywhere, I'm covered in it. It's even on my eyelashes. But basically, now that I have strips, I'm gonna glue those up into pieces to make them double thickness. Then we can use those to build a door, just like you would with the two by four. All of those pieces are laminated together and I went ahead and cut two of them down into shorter 12 inch pieces. These are gonna be the horizontal things that go across the door. And now that I've got all these, I'm basically at the same point you would be if you just started with two by fours and two by sixes. And I only say that because you could skip forward to right now if you were gonna be using dimensional lumber, but I'm having to make my own. Now how you get these pieces connected is gonna be exactly the same no matter what you're using. We've gotta attach all these different pieces but we don't want that attachment to be visible at all. So we're gonna use splines. Basically, we want this piece to attach to that, this piece to attach to that, and a whole bunch of other ones, but I don't wanna see any fasteners. So we need to do that attachment on the inside using a spline. You've seen me use biscuits before, and basically you just cut a little slot in two pieces of wood, and the slot just matches up. You put in a biscuit, which is a little wooden thingy, in between those slots to keep them aligned. And that would actually work here, but it wouldn't provide enough strength. We also need these things to be tied together by more material. And that's why a spline is useful. It's essentially this, except in a rectangular shape, and then you have a matching slot cut in all of the surfaces that need to be glued up. Plus, a biscuit is that thick, but we have this much material to deal with, so we could actually cut like a pretty thick slot here and make a pretty thick spline to add strength. So my plan is to cut some scrap two by four and two by two into quarter inch slivers here on the table saw. Now to go with those splines, I also have to cut a dado in all of the sides that are gonna connect to anything else. And for that, we're gonna use a dado stack. And 
until this moment, I hadn't really thought about how to assemble this, like how to clamp up the entire door. I'm trying to figure it out. I think it probably makes the most sense to use a big clamp like this and actually just clamp together the four outside pieces because then I can focus on just the clamping pressure across the top and the bottom. And then once I've got that frame, everything on the inside should kind of be automatically clamped, I think, but I don't really know. I'm just now realizing that I did not put a slot right here or on the bottom for the centerpiece to go in. So that's just gonna be glued and clamped in some crazy way that I haven't figured out yet. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe, and they've been voted the best home security system five years in a row. And I totally agree with that. They're awesome. I've used Simply Safe to secure my last two homes. In fact, I moved the system from one to the other, and it was just as easy to set up the second time. The way this works is you go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS. You build out a system that is just for you. You only pick the doorbells and cameras and sensors that you need for your home, and then it shows up at your house in a box. You can set up the entire system by yourself in about 30 minutes. It's very easy to do, and you get everything connected to their app. And once you've got the app, you can control the entire system from here. Plus, you can watch all of your different cameras. In addition to that, Simply Safe has monitoring available for about a dollar a day, which is a really good deal, and there's no long-term contracts. On top of that, they've got something called Active Guard Protection, which allows the monitoring agents to actually watch the outside of your house through your cameras and look for potential threats. If they see somebody coming up to the house that shouldn't be there, they can actually talk to them through the camera. They can set off sirens and they can even call the police if they need to, to stop a break in before it happens. Of course, there are people that you do want to come over to your house, friends and family, and they've got an AI technology that can remember and identify different people that should be there so they're good to go. Honestly, I really like the Simply Safe system. It's a cool company and the products just work great. You should definitely check it out again by going to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS. And if you use the code ILTMS, it's gonna give you 50% off your system. So it's a great deal. It's risk-free. If you don't love it, you can return it for a full refund in 60 days. Be sure to go check them out and huge thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Both of the door frames are glued up and they're looking pretty good. I think it's gonna work. But next I need to move on to figuring out how to mount the glass within these openings. And I ran into a problem. In the original doors upstairs, each one of these is a separate glass pane that's held in place by some trim that's added on both sides within this opening. And currently that piece of trim has something like that as a profile. Unfortunately, I can't find that anywhere. I had assumed that I would be able to find a piece of trim at one of the big box stores that was similar to that, but I couldn't find anything. In fact, this is the closest I could find and it's not actually gonna work. So my plan was to cut a little dado down the middle of this piece that would fit the glass that goes in it. Then I could chop this into four sections, make a little frame around the glass and slide that whole thing into each one of those openings. But I can't find nearly enough of this trim. And like always, I'm in a bit of a time crunch. I've got to get this video finished. I've got to get these doors up. And so I could either try to make my own trim with some pieces of wood, which is probably what they did originally, or I could 3D print it. I mean, this is likely a bad idea. Like, I don't know that I should do this, but at the same time, why not? It's a piece of trim that goes around a piece of glass to hold it in an opening. It's gonna get painted, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. And all it has to do is hold the glass. So why not? The first prints are off the printer, and at first I thought this was like, you know, a novel idea, kind of a dumb idea, but now I'm realizing that this is awesome. I've got two doors. Each door has 10 windows. Each window needs four pieces of trim, and each piece of trim has two miter cuts on the ends of it. That's 160 miter cuts. I've got enough wood for half of these, and so my plan was to print half and then cut half. And as I started to cut these, I did that basic math and realized I'm just gonna print them all. 
Now one of the downsides of 3D printing stuff like this is that it takes time. I did three windows worth, that's 12 pieces, and it took almost nine hours. But you know what I did during that nine hours? <laughs> But that's one of the cool things about digital manufacturing is that the machines can be working while you're doing something else, whether it's something fun or being more productive. And on top of that, I know that every one of these pieces is exactly the same length and the miters are exactly 45 degrees. I know exactly what I'm gonna get and there's no room for human error. And because I know exactly what I'm gonna get, I can go ahead and start putting them in. And to put them in, I have to cut the glass. Now, I have cut glass before but only a little bit. Ah! Ah! Oh, man. <laughs> well, that's a bummer. The first piece is completely wrong. I have a nice big curve. I can probably snap that off so that's good i can still use this piece but i lost a pretty big section there which is a bummer all right i have one of 20. of course you could also just go to a local glass shop and give them your dimensions and they would be able to cut these out very quickly it just may cost a little more Hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> Out of curiosity, I just called a local glass place to see how much it would cost to have them cut these pieces. And when it's all said and done, it was about $6.80 a piece. Now, getting the big sheets and cutting them down myself, each one cost me about $5.50 a piece. So it's not a whole lot of savings to do it yourselves. And I guarantee you, at least for me, the results would be better if they did it. Now, the problem is that it would take about a week. I got them all cut and I learned some stuff. My original idea was to get big sheets and cut them down into the small pieces that I needed. Part of the reason I got the big sheets because I thought it would be cheaper, even if I had done it right, but it's not. I went to Lowe's and found that a 10 by 12 piece was under $5, which is cheaper than the same amount in a big sheet. And all I had to do was cut off a half an inch on two sides and it worked way better. In fact, out of the 18 sheets that I cut, only one of them had a crack in it, and Lowe's will cut it for you. I just had so many that I felt bad for the guy. Anyway, so now we can try out to see if my whole idea will even work. Well, I mean, it's not dumb if it works, right? And it totally works. So now I just gotta put them in place. Now the one downside to using MDF for this is that these doors are very heavy. And I knew that would be the case, so I planned ahead for it, but still, they're heavy. So my plan for this is to put in some spacers, and this represents half of the negative space here, so the same space on the bottom and on the top of the frame. So I'm gonna put these spacers in, and then theoretically, this frame should drop right in. Oh my goodness, is that actually gonna work? It's so close. It's so close. Oh, I don't want to break the glass. <laughs> oh, man. A few moments later. First try. That's awesome. That is all the way in there. Fantastic. The glass has no movement. It's completely captured. The miters all line up. I've officially decided that it's not a dumb idea. Like I mentioned before, the one downside of doing it this way is that the prints take a long time. In fact, all the ones that I have printed are now in the door and I'm waiting on the next set to print. And in the meantime, we can go ahead and glue these in place, kind of temporarily, but permanently. I've got an idea for that. Now, luckily the fit on these is tight enough that they are held in place, but I wouldn't just leave it at that. I need to glue them in. But with the frame and the glass being separate and being able to slide in, it makes sense to kind of make it so that I can take them out in case one of the pieces of glass ever breaks. So I think I'm gonna use some CA glue in the corners just to like hold it and then run a bead of caulk around the face of both sides of the frame so it's held in place. But if I ever need to take them out, it's just cutting out some caulk.
Now, of course, these doors still have to be sanded and painted, but I think the painting is going to be easier once they're hung up. So let's talk about hanging them up. I found several different companies that make sliding door hardware, and honestly, they all look about the same. And then I came across this one called Mansion. The product is called Sliden Up. Sliden, slid, slid, slid up. S-L-I-D apostrophe U-P. Samsonite. I was way off. But the cool thing about this is that it has two tracks for two doors, but they're connected so that they're synchronized. Of course, synchronized doors is not necessary at all, but I started looking at how I might do that myself, maybe some 3D printed pulleys and stuff, and then I found this kit for 50 bucks. So that seemed worth it. I should probably clarify, the 50 bucks was just for the part that synchronizes them, not for the whole kit. Now I've never put these in, so I'm just gonna follow the instructions like everybody else. Wish me luck. This is just the first coat of paint. Still got some sanding to do, and all of that still looks terrible, right? That's because next time, I'm gonna completely cover these up. I'll see you then. That's one of the great things about dig- Whoa! <laughs> In that process of measuring and modeling, I figured out, I figured out, and the measure, the, 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 the measure, the measurements? The measurements. I couldn't find anything. In fact, this is the, Ah!